I'm sure there is a point at which it's too cold for the dogs. You would not do well in cold temperatures, which is what we're discussing. <laughs> Sally from Facebook asked that, what point is it too cold for the dogs? What do you have to do to survive that kind of cold? I'm sure there is a point at which it's too cold for the dogs. You know, I, I have never seen 60 below, I've seen 57 below, <laughs> and that's really cold. Um, so I don't know where the cutoff is, but I would say that starting at about 20 below, you start making huge and definite adjustments to your schedule, to your feeding regimen, to the clothes that the dogs wear, everything you start adjusting all of those things to accommodate for the temperature so i suppose if you had giant puffy you know onesies for each dog and you could insulate them really well you could theoretically run in incredibly cold temperatures practically speaking 60 below is insanely cold when you start getting in that area you need to be incredibly attentive to every dog stopping and checking on them very often make sure you have all the proper gear on those dogs to keep them warm Make sure that if, heaven forbid, you see any overflow or water on the trail, that you absolutely stay away from it. Or if a dog does make contact with water out there, you immediately get whatever, you know, if they're wearing a booty, the booty has to come off, get their foot dry, put dry booties back on those dogs. Even in 35, 40 below, you're gonna see, not everybody, but it's, I personally, I think it's very wise to adjust your running schedule, shorten up the runs, stop more regularly, make sure you're getting the calories into those dogs because operating at 35 below zero takes a certain toll on any living being um, just to exist, just to be alive. You then have to add the difficulty of traveling a certain distance on top of that already difficult task of staying warm at 35 below. That being said, the sled dogs are incredibly well adapted for the cold. You know, they went from being, you know, tens of thousands of years ago, these guys were wolves that were very successful Arctic survivors and had proved that for millennia. They were then domesticated, became sled dogs, Malamutes and Siberians primarily, which never became a house pet. They still lived outside. They were still a pack animal living in those same elements. And that's just to say they never lost the qualities or traits that made those same animals great Arctic survivors as wolves. Hello, kitty. You would not do well in cold temperatures, which is what we're discussing. <laughs> but what do you do to survive that kind of cold for me personally? First is wearing a lot of good clothing, having the right gear. I have a very nice parka. It's produced by Nonstop Dogwear in, in Norway. Man, it's, it's an awesome parka. I worked with them for a couple years kind of developing that parka and they've done a lot of work on their own, but having really good base layers is super, super, super important. I really like kind of my wool layers. I think those are very effective. My, my wooly sweater, I have long pants that are pretty much the same as the sweater. So having the right layers and then being acclimated to it. The fact that I'm outside all winter training in similar conditions prepares me to function in 35 40 50 below zero had I spent all winter hanging out in Hawaii and then went out on the Iditarod even with that great gear I still would have frozen to death so having your body acclimated and um, you know just what you crave the foods that you eat you definitely go for some fattier foods when you're operating in those really cold temperatures mm -hmm.